Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week one of the APA Little Cup League. Um, today we're up against Stephen and his Hartford Whalers. I think that's the name of the team. Um, I'm not going to do any draft analysis or anything. Not this week. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it going forward or not. Basically, I've had a lot of personal stuff going on this week. I've had my granddad passed away. I've had one of my mates go into hospital with a stroke. I have um, had to help my nan sort out all the funeral stuff. Just time has been like scarce. I'm sorry if this is really bad. I haven't had a chance to watch the game back. I haven't had a chance. I mean, this was like three weeks ago, so I haven't had a chance to really look over. So no team builder this week. I'll go over my team very briefly on the screen so you can see it before the game. Um, but um, no team builder. No, I can't be bothered to put the sprites on the layout over there, I'm afraid, because again, effort and time I don't have at the moment. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into the, the team, sort of, I say I'm not going to do a team builder, but we'll do team builder quickly. So my opponent's draft is, and excuse me for being unprofessional, I've got it on my phone, is Alone, uh, sorry no, just normal Diglett, Fletchling, Smoochum, Alone and Meowth, Squirtle, Paris, Krogunk, Kranidos, Cyndaquil and Pichu. So, um, I have put a draft analysis out of, for this league already, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you do, because it has all um, 10 mons that I have in my draft, uh, so you can understand why I'm bringing and why. So, I say you understand what I'm bringing and why, I don't understand what I've brought and why, because it's been so long, like I said, since I've last played a game, um, or looked at this video, so um, we'll go with what's in front of me. We have got the max attack Fampy. Um, I think actually with Earthquake, Ice Shard, Knock Off, Rock Slide, my opponent doesn't actually have any sword switch-ins, and while Fampy isn't the fastest, um, it hits hard with that. He's got 16 attack, it's got Stab, Earthquake, and Little Cup, and his, I don't think he actually had that many answers to this thing, which is uh, really nice. So that's probably why I bought this. Uh, next up we have got the Voltorb with Shed Shell, because my opponent does have the Diglett and we can run the speed tie if, uh, if I'm feeling risky or you know the game comes down to it. Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Signal Beam, Hidden Power, Ice, Soundproof, again the EVs to speed tie with the Diglett, Max Special Attack. I appreciate Voltorb maybe is used more in Little Cup for sort of support like Fast Taunt and Screens and Explosion, um, but I think again Voltorb had a really nice matchup, I don't think he actually had an Electric Resist outside of Diglett. And maybe Pichu, let me just get the team up again. Um, he had Paris, but that's why I have Signal Beam. So things weak to Electric, he's got Fletchling, he's got Squirtle. Um, weak to Hidden Power Ice, he's got Diglett, he's got Fletchling, he's got um, Paris. Yeah, it just has a good matchup for the speed. If I can get some free volt switching, it's, it's quite nice. Next up, we have got um, a mixed defensive Bronzor with Colberberry. Um, I can tell you for a fact now, if I was if I like rather than Colber, um, this game would have probably been a bit different. We have got Flash Cannon, Psychic, Toxic, Stealth Rock. Um, yeah, just kind of there to be an annoying wall. Um, next up we have got Staryu, which is a speedy, bulky uh, variant because my opponent does have, um, what was it here, Cyndaquil, which is really scary to my team. And it also potentially helps live a move from Diglett and then I get to fire off an analytic boost it's called. But I doubt it will stay in anyway. Um, I think the coverage again just covers the team quite nicely there. Next up we have got uh, Chewy the Axe, probably my late game sweeper. Um, Dragon Claw, Aqua Tail, Facade, Dragon Dance. Um, enough speed to, well it's, it's max speed, but it's enough speed at plus one to outspeed the rest of his team barring Choice Scarfers. Um, max attack. Um, really I didn't need anything other than Dragon Claw because he doesn't have a Fairy type. Um, and I don't actually think he has a Steel type either. He doesn't, he literally has no dragon resist whatsoever, everything's neutral, so I really struggled as to what I should put in uh, in these last few slots here. Um, but I do now know that in the future I will be running protect and you will see why. And then finally we have a max defense um, Growlithe with Morning Sun, Will-O-Wisp, Flare Blitz and Wild Charge. So that is uh, the team as you can see on the screen. Um, let me bring up the battle video. Um, so as you can see, my opponent decided to bring Paris, Alola Meowth, Diglett, Cranidos, Fletchling, and Cyndaquil. So, I can't honestly say if that's what I expected, because I don't know what I expected at this point. Um, but let's just get straight into the battle. Um, I'm recording this a bit differently than I would normally. I wouldn't normally record the playback of a game. 
I'd normally import it into Vegas, but with the layout, I felt it was easier just to do this all in one go in um, OBS. Can I skip forward to the battle? I don't actually know when it starts. Uh, it's Oh, that's a good time. Right, so um, we're going to get into the battle here with Steven. And from what I can remember, from what I just watched a few minutes ago, um, I do decide to leave off with, lead off with the fan peep because, like I said, um, its move coverage is great and it can hit really hard. But my opponent does decide to leave, uh, lead with the Paris, which I probably should have seen from the start because it is a free spore against my team because I don't have um, my my Oddish with me. And originally, I remember this: I did have Oddish in my team builder or in my team to start with. Um, but he's going to go for the Spore, I'm going to go into my Growlithe, and actually looking back at the replay, um, Growlithe being asleep is like, is huge for my opponent, and for me, it's it's not great, because as you'll see in a bit, it, it allows him to, you know, cause some real trouble to my team. So I'm now going to switch out into Voltorb, because um, I wanted to scout this thing's moveset. Um, he does knock off, it doesn't do much damage at all, but I do lose my Shed Shell, which is slightly annoying, because um, now I can't switch out against Diglett if he does want to... Uh, you know, bring that thing in on this. I go for the signal beam, it does just under half, and now my opponent is going for leech life. Um, but again, that really doesn't do too much, that's so only 7 damage. So I can take one more, living on one. So I'm kind of in a, like a winning situation here by clicking signal beam if he wants to continue to leech life. So we're going to potentially see his last move, see if he has that synthesis, because he's got leech life, knock off, spore, and synthesis. So now I know that this thing can't really touch my pampy, um, unless he knocks off. Um, and I think Fampy is actually going to be my play in a minute. I think I click Signal Beam one more time to try and stall this thing out of Synthesis. Um, or, you know, take as many away as I can. Um, but he does Synthesis again. And I think on this next turn with Volt Orb, I'm going to potentially switch out with Volt Switch and go back into my Fampy, expecting another Synthesis. Um, what I should have done, in hindsight, is go out into my um, Growlithe to attempt to wake up. Because um, I would have had one free turn to do so. Um, but actually, I do go into Fampy, and he does click Synthesis. And because I know he hasn't got any Grass moves, he hasn't got Giga Drain, um, or Seed Bomb, or anything like that, I am free to click Knock Off with my Fampy. Um, and that's what I do. I manage to knock off this thing's Violite, and I am carrying the Rock Slide, because obviously this thing is a bug type, it is going to be weak to it. Um, the Steven does knock off my Berry Juice, which is rather annoying. I wish I was a Violite on this thing and I haven't had it knocked off um, but we do go for the rock slide, we do connect and we do take out the parrots which is a bit of annoyance for me um, but this does mean now that um, Staryu has a bit of an easy, or well he didn't have a grasp me but Staryu could potentially have an easier time uh, my opponent does go into Cyndaquil here, I'm going to go back into my Growlithe now um, and absolutely chew up any move this thing wants to go for, I know I'm physically defensive with Intimidate but even though uh, I'm just a Violite with no special defense investment I am going to chew that fire blast really nice from a life orb, Cyndaquil. So now my opponent is going to switch out into his Fletchling, I believe. Um, what I should have done here in hindsight is switch out into my Voltorb. I didn't assess this as a threat before the game. I wasn't even sure this was going to come. Um, but now my opponent is able to get a free substitute. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, you know what? He's going to have Berry Juice. He's going to have Acrobatics. He's going to have Roost, maybe. No, no, he won't because he's Berry Juice. So he has, root, he has Berry Juice, Substitute, Sword Stance, Acrobatics, what's his last move? If he does have Roost, then my Bronzor is fine. If he doesn't have Roost, he'll have Flame Charge, in which case my Bronzor is not fine. Um, I do manage to wake up here with Growlithe, which is one turn too late, unfortunately. Um, because I am, while I'm able to break the sub every time, um, he is now at plus two. And all he has to do is keep subbing until he gets to his Berry Juice. Once he's got his berry juice, he's at full health, and then it means I have to pick my mons carefully, sack things off to try and kill this thing. Um, this is why I'm saying if my Bronzor had a Violet, this game would have probably gone a bit differently because I would have had a lot more bulk to take this thing on. Probably would have been able to take spoilers to flame charges instead of um, dying from the second one, as you'll see in a minute. Um, then potentially I might not have had to have lose as many Pokemon as I did against this this Fletchling. So I do have to keep clicking Wild Charge. I'm going to have to sack off my Growlithe here because I can't let this thing have a free substitute. Because then I just do straight up lose. So um, my opponent just clicked Acrobatics and he crits my Growlithe. I don't know if that mattered because he wasn't he was at plus two, but I am max defense. So who knows? I haven't done the calc. 
Um, I'm going to go into my Bronzor here, and this is where he reveals he has the Flame Charge, and I'm like, ah, sugar. Um, I did bring Levitate Bronzor because I needed it for the Diglett, because Diglett was a real problem for my team. Um, but I'm going to click Psychic, and considering how weak Bronzor is offensively, that did some good damage. Um, but he does click Flame Charge here, so he's now plus 2 speed, plus 2 attack. Um, yeah, this isn't looking good. So I do have Ice Shard on my Vampy. Um, so I am going to have to go into that. Now it's a roll for me to kill with this Ice Shard. Admittedly, it's 15 out of 16 times my opponent's favour. There is that one roll I can get where um, I kill this thing and unfortunately I don't get that roll. So my Vampy is going to go down. Again, this is where if I like could have potentially been nice, but I was knocked off anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but we're only allowed two of I like users per week, by the way. I'm going to go into Patrick here because I do have a slight chance to live this acrobatics. It's my only hope, otherwise I lose the game. And my <laughs> I live on one. I click Ice Beam and I do manage to kill the Fletchling, which is really nice. Um, I do get that crit, the revenge crit that definitely mattered. So the Fletchling's down, but at a great cost. He basically clicked his thumbs and half my team's gone. But we're still in this because I do have Axew. I'm going to leave my Staryu in here to die to a fake out. He does click, it's interesting that he clicks fake out um, because he now uses his normal gem, which means he has no item, which means I under I know he's not a Violite and he hasn't got the boost anymore. So I'm going to go into my Axew here and I'm going to have to click Dragon Claw. He does click Thief. That's fine. I'm Z move. I forgot to mention that in the team builder. That Thief does do a lot of damage, um, but I'm Dragonium Z. And actually from this amount of health now, because he doesn't have the normal gem, I'm able to take another fake out if he does want to switch out. I'm going to click Z Dragon Claw. There's, he has nothing that can live this move. Um, if he did stay in with his Alone and Meowth there, I think he just lost the game. Unless he did have Sucker Punch on his Diglett, of course. Um, but he does decide to sack off his Cyndaquil here. While well, I do go for the Dragonium Z. Nice, cool... Um, it's called thumbnail potential right there. Um, this Cyndaquil is going to absolutely get annihilated as you can see. Um, just from this game alone, I'm getting the feeling that Axie is going to just wreak havoc in Little Cup. It's so much fun and so good. Like, when I was building the team for this week and next week, I was just like, you know what, let's just chuck Axie in there because it can do so much work. Because Dragon Resists aren't very common in Little Cup. Um, this is where the Meowth uh, clicks fake out. And this is where I'm saying... Because I didn't need any other coverage other than Dragon Claw, this is where I should have put in Protect. Because if I had Protect, I would literally have won this game. Because I would have been able to stop the Meowth clicking uh, Fake Out every time it came in. Um, and I could have just Dragon Clawed it for the kill. Um, Cranidose just dies, which is really nice. Um, and now we're in a... Is it 3v2 or 2v2 situation? We're in a bad situation here because Meowth has to click Fake Out. Um... And obviously my Axew goes down and the last thing I have left on my team is Voltorb. Um, and the Voltorb is going to outspeed and get a Signal Beam off. The only way I can win this is if I get a Signal Beam Confusion, full Confusion, into another Signal Beam, into a Hidden Power Ice Crit, I believe. That was the only way I could potentially win unless his um, Diglett was a uh, Focus Sash variant. But we do lose the game 2-0 to Steven. Um... The downfall was me letting my Growlithe sleep um, and letting the Fletchling set up. So if I had Raw on Growlithe, I think I would have probably just won this game outright because I wouldn't have had to have lost so many things um, as I did. And the Fletchling is just purely what won the game for my opponent. So well played, uh, Stephen. That's a good game. Guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Let me know how you think we're going to get on this season. Little Cup is completely new to me. I love watching Little Cup. It's completely different to normal, so that's why I enjoy it. Not to say I'm actually any good at playing it, though. I've got a lot to learn. Um, but make sure you check out the links below, especially for my opponent, Stephen. Um, but also the, all the other coaches' links are down there as well. Make sure you check out all the APA stuff like Twitter as well. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.